Looking to cool down your laptop? How much can a large cooling pad help improve thermals? In this video, I'm checking out the Thermaltake Massive 20RGB cooler, and I'll cover laptop CPU and GPU thermals at different fan speeds and height settings, to show you how it can help improve the performance of your laptop. Just before we get into the review, I wanted to remind you guys that I'm currently running a giveaway with Kong computers for this cooling pad, as well as the Razer Black Widow X keyboard. The giveaway is still open for a few more days and open to anyone in Australia. Check the link in the description to enter. Alright, so this cooling pad is quite large, and on top it's got a metal mesh with the Thermaltake logo up the back. Perhaps most importantly, it's also got RGB lighting around the edge, which should keep your laptop even cooler compared to not having it. And don't worry, you can turn the lighting off if that's not your thing, but they also sell cheaper models without the lighting too. It's so large because it's got a 200mm fan in the center, and the cooling pad supports laptops up to 19 inches. I've got the fairly large 17 inch Aorus X7 here, and it fits with room to spare. Toward the front, there are some rubber pads which prevent the laptop from sliding off when it's on an angle. Underneath, there's nothing going on. Just the fan intake in the center, as well as some rubber feet. The rubber feet did an acceptable job of keeping it in place. However, there are two extendable feet towards the back to raise it up further. This angle may aid in typing and also improves airflow, but I'll check that later in the temperature testing. The feet can be extended twice, giving you three different heights to use. By default, it's on a 3 degree angle, and this can be extended to 9 and 13 degrees. And I'll refer to these as levels 1, 2, and 3 respectively from now on. With the feet extended at any level though, the bottom of them are hard plastic, so it's much easier for the back of the cooling pad to move around. Although I did find this a little more difficult once you've actually got the weight of a laptop sitting on it. On the back, from left to right, there's the fan speed adjustment dial, buttons for cycling through the 5 lighting effects, and changing between 7 different colours, as well as the power input. The fan speed dial can be turned all the way to one side to completely turn the fan off, or turn it on and adjust the fan speed from low to high, and I'll be including temperatures with a fan at different speeds later. The fan is listed as running between 600 to 800 RPM speeds, so there's not really much difference between minimum and maximum speeds. Here's how it sounds at the different levels to give you an idea. The Aorus X7 wasn't idle during this test, so we're mostly hearing the fan from the cooling pad. There's not much of a difference between running the fan at low or maximum speeds. The difference will be even less noticeable when you include the laptop fan noise anyway. The first button, which cycles through the 5 lighting effects, allows you to change between wave, RGB spectrum, pulse, blink, and a solid colour. Some of the effects like pulsing or the solid colour can be changed between 7 colours using the next button, including red, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, white, and purple. Finally, there's the power input. You connect the included cable to the cooling pad, which has two USB Type-A ports that you plug into your laptop. The cooling pad requires 1.2 amps to activate, so depending on the USB port of your laptop, you may be able to use one port, or both may be required. While I get that it's good to be able to plug into your laptop and power it, I feel like a cooling pad this size isn't exactly portable, so it may have made more sense to also have a power adapter that you could instead plug into the wall, rather than potentially taking up two USB slots, which is a fair amount for a laptop when you're essentially using it while docked, so you'll probably want to attach things to it using the USB ports. So how does the cooling pad actually perform? I've tested using the 17 inch Aorus X7, with i7 8850H CPU and Nvidia GTX 1080 graphics, so quite a powerful and hot machine. Testing was completed with an ambient room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, and the laptop was running ADA64 and the Heaven benchmark at the same time to try and utilize both the CPU and GPU together in a combined load. I've got the X7 set to 80% fan speed, so not quite max, but still pretty loud. We can see here that the CPU temperature was always 90 degrees Celsius in this test. It was always thermal throttling regardless of what I did with the cooling pad. We'll see in the next graph how performance was improved though. Just because it's constantly thermal throttling doesn't mean we're not getting improvements. We're seeing improvements to the GPU temperature. 
as that wasn't thermal throttling, we're able to drop the temperature from 89 degrees Celsius without the cooler by 7 degrees to 82 with the fan maxed out and legs fully extended. Here are the average clock speeds for the same tests just shown. As the GPU wasn't thermal throttling, we're not really seeing a difference here. But there does appear to be an extremely small improvement as GPU boost works better under cooler temperatures. What's more interesting is we're seeing an improvement to CPU clock speeds as we raise the feed of the cooler and increase the fan speed, though not by much. The difference between the laptop only and then best case with the cooling pad at maximum height and maximum fans is only 200MHz across all cores. But this is kind of a worst case with a 6 core 8850H under full load combined with GPU load. If there was no thermal throttling, we'd probably see temperature improvements like we did with the graphics. For up to date pricing, check the link in the description. At the time of recording, this cooling pad is around 40 US dollars, though others seem to be less than that. So it really seems like you're paying for the larger size and of course that RGB lighting. Compared to the price of your beastly gaming laptop, that seems fine for the small boost in performance you'll be looking at. While there is certainly an excessive amount of RGB lighting in products these days, overall I personally like the design of the cooling pad. As we saw in the thermal testing, it does make an improvement, but it's nothing exceptionally crazy. Performance can be boosted, but the results will vary between laptop. All it's doing is blowing air up and increasing the space between the bottom of the laptop and the desk. So if you've got a laptop with no air vents on the bottom, like a MacBook or the Asus Zephyrus M for example, you'll probably see less of an improvement as the internal components won't get that airflow. The only issue I had was the potential requirement to take up two whole USB Type-A ports. Granted, many may be fine with just one port like I was here, I think this type of cooling pad is less portable and more of a stationary object. So it may have made more sense to have a power adapter to plug into the wall instead. Let me know what you guys thought about the Thermaltake Massive 20 RGB cooling pad down in the comments. Don't forget to enter the giveaway linked in the description if you're in Australia. And of course, subscribe for future tech videos like this one.